Okay, I'm going to demonstrate a number of what we call string functions. So to start with, I'm going to declare a variable as a string. Uh, I'm going to create a very basic program. And we're going to use some simple output. Now remember the that symbol, the ampersand symbol, is known as concatenation. So what that will do, that will join together this text here and the variable word that's been entered. So we've used concatenation. So if we watch that program working, very simply we see the word entered is monkey. OK, so that's one string function. What we might want to do is actually convert that word into uppercase. So we can use word equals word dot to upper. So what I enter now it then displays that in uppercase. Something else we can do is dot to lower and that will turn any word into lowercase. So they are two functions to upper to lower. Another way of doing the same thing is to use something called ucase and that takes that word and it turns it into uppercase in exactly the same way. So again I could do something like bat and ball and it turns that all into uppercase. Something that is quite useful is what is known as proper case. Now to do proper case we use strconv to so stand for string convert. If we have a look then, it's expecting a string. So I can use my word. And then you've got this whole list to choose from. Again, it's another way we can do lowercase and another way we can do uppercase, but it's a more, that's a more complicated way. What we can do here is something called proper case. Proper case means that the first letter of every word is a capital letter. So if I, I said the cat sat on the mat, in proper case the first letter of each word is a capital. So that's useful for names, especially a first name and a surname and a middle name. Um, street addresses and actually putting that into capital letters. So we've looked at dot to upper, we've looked at dot to lower, we've looked at U case, L case and STRCONV. Which includes proper case. Other things we might do, we might find the length of a string. So I'm going to declare a new variable as an integer because a length is a number. And this time I'm going to say length equals word dot length. So this has got concatenation in it again. So we're saying the length of the word, we're going to display the word, is characters. OK. So we'll run that now. When it runs. OK. So length of the word, let's put my name in there. 
went for where Darren is six characters. Now that is particularly useful, especially for something like a password, a validation, what if we want somebody to enter something that is at least three letters long or five letters long. We could bring in a do and a loop until into this. Loop until length is greater than or equal to three. If length is less than three, then console right line not long enough. I'm not going to display the length there. Well, no, sorry, I don't display it till there anyway. Okay, so let's uh, run through that. And I'm going to try for a word with two characters. Not long enough. Not long enough. Length of the word ADA is three characters. So that allows us that validation using length. So length is really, really useful. Something that we could do. We could say for index equals or for count we've been using for count equals one two word dot length and we could print out each letter of the word onto a separate line and we can do this by making a reference to the position within that word. So this is quite an interesting one. So we can see there I've put in brackets count. So the first time around this loop count will be one. So that will refer to that will refer to the first character of word. The second time it will be the second character and so on. So if we look at this now and I enter something like Franklin College Oops, that's gone out of range. That's because it actually starts from zero and goes to word length minus one. Um, the first position, when we do it like this, is known as position zero. Computers start from zero. So a little bit of troubleshooting there. Franklin College. And we can see there, every character is on a separate line. Just something that we can do with a for loop useful for if we want to count the number of spaces in a word or a sentence so we can have an if statement in there if word count equals space then dim space as or let's uh, let's do it to uh, a letter so sort of like of L. Then letter equals letter plus one. So we're going to count the number of lowercase L's in there. Console right line. The number of L's is and letter. So enter a word. Franklin College the number of L's is free. So that's used a for loop to go through every single letter of that word and count them using this idea of taking that string and looking at an indiv individual character of it. Okay so we've looked at length in detail with that one. Something else that's particularly useful, I'm going to clear all this is something known as the mid function. Now the mid function allows us to return a subset of a string. So if we want a, I'm going to have a dim word 2 as a string. So the word 2 equals mid, I can take word 
and what that says is start where do we start at now the mid function works slightly different so starting from letter number has been zero the first character is one so if I do one and then the length so if I return one character that's going to return the first character of that word so if I do console right line now and do word two you'll see that whatever word I enter it gives me the first character so if I say hello it give me a H if I change that to two that means starting from the first character return two characters so I'll just do this again I'm gonna put um, house and that does H O Now what we can do with this, we can give that any starting address. So if I want to return the second character, and only the second character, I start to, and I return one character. So if I put cat, I expect it to say ah, and there's the ah. So that mid string is really, really useful. It's an alternative way of extracting each character in turn and doing what we've just done. So I could say from here for index keep putting index it doesn't matter for count equals one two ten. I'm actually going to call it index because it's giving me the index position or instead of ten word dot length. And what I could say is if the mid function of that word starting at position index and returning just one character if that equals L then letter equals letter plus one so it's doing exactly like what we did before but using something called a mid function and I'm gonna output letter so I'm gonna run this again with Franklin College and there it's got the number three again just like before so the mid function is an alternative one. It allows us to take a sub string. So we've got those so far. Um, another function we might use L trim. So L trim, if we run through this piece of code here, and I put hi, L trim trims all the spaces off the start, and in the same way, R trim trims all the spaces off the end. So we've got L trim, we've got R trim. Okay, so with those string functions, what I'd like you to do is to tackle the programming exercises. Okay, thank you very much.